This is 89.1 KUAR. I'm Michael Heblin. The cartoonist behind the newspaper strip Pearls Before Swine will be speaking in Little Rock on Wednesday the 16th. Stefan Pastus created the comic strip in 2001, featuring characters like Rat, Pig, Goat, and regular cameos from the cartoonist. This has been my favorite strip for years, and I'm not saying that just because he's joining me now. Hi, Stefan. Hi, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. You bet. Pearls Before Swine runs in about 750 papers worldwide, including here and the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I was trying to think of exactly why the strip appeals to me so much. It's edgier than most, offering commentary on society. Occasionally, there are ridiculous, long-winded but hilarious puns. And you often tout the joy of drinking beer. Uh, The characters and the topics, I assume these are uh, all parts of your personality. Yeah, I think so. The strip is really me. I think if you've read the strip that long, you more or less know uh, who I am. I I notice that at book signings. I tend to attract people that are kind of like me and have a lot of the same same interests. It's really, you know what it is? It's just... um, you accumulate these experiences in life and then it goes into this big stew in your brain and then it comes out in terms of your output. Um, So really the key, I think the key to generating those ideas is what you experience on a day-to-day basis. Well, during the last two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, a situation like nothing we've ever seen before, uh, you found a way to really channel so many aspects of this the anxiety, the isolation, the uncertainty. Uh, in the strip hasn't always been funny. Sometimes it's uh, been uh, uh, almost depressing, but a way to commiserate the uh, shared experience. Uh, what what has that been uh, like for you? You know, writing at a time when uh, maybe things aren't funny. Yeah, it's, a, it's always a challenge. You know, I don't know if most people know, but when you do a comic strip, you have to produce 365 days a year. So you may be going through something in your own life or whatever, and you always have to produce. So you sort of get used to uh, writing no matter what, um, number one. Number two, we're used to the isolation. I mean, it's what we do. The only difference for me is I used to go to cafes to write. Now I stay here in my studio. But um the isolation for me has just made me produce more. I mean, I've done three books besides Pearls, um, kids' books. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think, just that isolation and the angst is, sort of feeds the, your uh, production. But, you know, it's, this is the only time in my career, because I, I started just after 9-11. Um, this is the only time in my career where I knew the whole world was talking about one thing. And if you don't address that one thing, you, you're not gonna be very relevant. Like it's, it's on all of our minds. It, it was such a enormous disruption. Like how, how, could you not, how could you not talk about it? Now for me, the hard part was I'm eight months ahead. So every single week, almost every week for the past two years, I call my editor and say, what's the earliest dailies I can substitute out and replace them with these current ones? And he would tell me, and I would do that with the dailies and I would do it with the Sunday. So I've been subbing in strips constantly for this last two years and I'm trying to stay ahead of the story. You never know which way it's gonna go. If you remember in July, it looked like we were done. And so then the, the COVID strips tailed off and then, you know, boom again. So it was, very hard story to keep um, uh, track of, as we all know, we've seen these ups and downs. So, but yeah, anyways, this is a a strange uh, time. Um, And also, you know, I mean, my own life, like it's such a weird, uh, everything that is going on is, is so unprecedented. So how how could you not comment on that? I I don't know, like when you see some of the other cartoonists, I won't name them. uh, We may have just talked about them before we went on the air, but they, you wouldn't know what happened. And I don't, I don't quite know what the purpose of not, like you see, to me personally, it seems like it's, you're fairly irrelevant in that case. You've got to comment on what people are talking about. You have to. 
Yeah, you wrote in uh, one strip that ran on uh, February 20th uh, that it was written on January 8th and that you had a deadline to get the strip submitted and you uh, uh, put in uh, three possible outcomes and yeah, that that was just, uh, I mean, it's got to be such a challenge to be topical. It is, especially something tragic like this, because you could, when this started, believe it or not, I was in South America when everything shut down and I almost didn't get out of the country that I was in. And so um, I immediately, when I got home, did a week of strips about that very fact, pretending I didn't have access to my pens or paper. So I, I used a crayon or a pencil and I drew on notebook paper and I submitted that just to show that I was stuck and all that stuff. But um but yeah, I, anyways, um, I missed your question. Well, oh yeah, that was going to go. So anyways, when I did that, when I did those strips, here's what I didn't know. I didn't know, like, remember how bad it was like in New York and stuff in March of 2020? Mm-hmm. Like, what if this thing had gone even worse, like right away, like terrible, like, don't you dare bring up that subject. That is always the risk with current um, events. And sometimes it happens inadvertently. Ye- years ago, years ago, you may remember there was a senator from Minnesota named Paul Wellstone who died in a plane crash. I believe the day after he died, I had a series of strips running that I submitted eight oh. months ago where Rat was running against a dead senator for office because he thought it would make the debates easier because, you know, um, and everyone just explodes saying, how could you make fun of them? And I don't think most people know we don't submit. If I do a strip today, the soonest it will run a daily strip is two and a half weeks from now. If I submit a Sunday strip, it's six weeks. So I, it's very tough to predict where a story will go. Well, the final thing I'll ask, uh, or maybe just mention about the pandemic. I mean, early on when there was so much uncertainty, I mean, there was one strip you wrote that I just, uh, I went back to so many times over several days and just practically cried, just where a pig walks out of the house, walks into uh, his favorite bar, Clive. Uh, neighbor Bob says, pig, welcome pig. And everybody hugs one another and they're all chugging beer and to a whole round of eating, drinking and being together one whole day, one whole day. But of course, then turns around and there's pig and he's just staring out the window saying one day i mean that just uh because that was at the time when we didn't know if we were ever going to be able to get back out and uh you know resume just going and hanging out with uh you know your friends at a bar that you only know from a bar yeah yeah that's why this event for me is like so unique i i have not toured for pearls in those two years like it was impossible so I think, it, I think it will be nice and sort of cathartic, hopefully for all of us to just be together again. Yeah, because I miss that too. Pig is me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's great to have you in Little Rock. I read you had become an attorney in California, but at some point decided that's not what you wanted to do with your life. Yeah, and it wasn't for a little bit of time. It was for a full uh, decade. Litigation attorney, San Francisco, defending insurance companies. I always say that in the show for one reason, because I know it will make the entire room boo, and it always (laughs) always makes me laugh. Um, But yeah, I just hated it. So I would draw at nights and on weekends, submit the stuff to all the syndicates and try to get syndicated. Well, we were emailing uh, ahead of this interview, and uh, uh, I mentioned uh, Charles Schultz and... uh, yeah, that I think uh, that that was my introduction to uh, newspaper comic strips was uh, just because I was introduced to the TV show holiday specials. And then that led to me finding the newspaper and my church had these huge bound volumes of Schultz collections. I think that even is part of what uh, encouraged me to uh, really be interested in learning how to read. But you met Charles Schultz, as you're working to make this transition, uh, you went to an ice rink that uh, Schultz was known to frequent every day. Yeah, yeah, Schultz, uh, they called him Sparky. No one ever says Charles, but Sparky um, had an ice arena here in the town I'm in now, and I heard he got an English muffin every day at X time, and so I went hoping to see him. Um, Little cafe attached to the ice arena, 
and all I saw was uh, skaters. <laughs> there was no Schultz. So I was like, That's, and I had actually taken the day off of work, which I never did. I just left work and I went up to Santa Rosa. At the time, I didn't live here. And uh, so I was like, this is so dumb. He probably doesn't come every day. So I got up to leave. And just when I did, this man with this shock of white hair enters to the other door. And I, you know, I don't know who it is like in your life who's like your hero, but like push them together with five other of your heroes. And that was who that was to me. I mean, that, that it was, I've met famous people. Schultz to me was mythic. Um, so I saw he got his English muffin. I waited for him to finish. And uh, when he finished, I walked across the cafe. As I remember, it was just me and him. And I knelt beside his chair and I said, Mr. Schultz, this is the worst opening line ever. Mr. Schultz, my name is Stefan Pastis and I'm an attorney. <laughs> and uh, he, his, I remember distinctly that his face turned red. I, I think he thought he was being served looking back on it with a subpoena yeah. so i so i saw that and i said no no i also draw and he said do you have your stuff with you and i had not intended for that but i did it was in the car so maybe wow. i didn't intend to show him and so he said can i see it so that i mean that's like that's like ted williams saying hey can you hit let's see you hit and all of a sudden the stakes just go through the roof so i show it to him and he gave me a bunch of tips and pointers and we talked about we talked about peanuts and I told him the influence he had had on me. And um, yeah, it, it was, it's, I still can't believe it happened. And then my life intersected with his uh, when he was near death in 2000. And um, yeah, it's crazy. I was recently in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I know Jeannie, his uh, widow, and I got, I found every address that him and his father ever lived in in mm. St. Paul and I visited each of the homes. I mean, I'm a I'm a true blue uh fan. Yeah. Well, and his strips, I mean, they were so biographical every aspect. Yeah. So. I asked him that. I I said something about who the characters are based on. He said every single one of them is based on some aspect of me. And he said you can't do a character it's hard to do a character that's not because you don't know other people as well as you think you do. He told me, so that was, I mean, that's always locked into my brain. I remember him telling me that. And today you, today you serve on the uh, board of the uh, Schultz Museum and Research Center? I did until yeah. recently, yeah. But I just did something for them yesterday. It was funny. I got a list from the Schultz Museum of 100 significant items in Sparky's life. And they said, would you like to comment on one of them? And so I obviously chose his desk. And I, I told the time I first saw it and how I put my hands on it, almost like it was had magical, mystical healing powers. Um, yeah, Sparky is by far and away the biggest influence on my creative life, no question. Yeah, and the characters in Pearls Before Swine, they're all, would you say every one of them is a part of your personality? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. I think Rat is the person who's that voice in your head that you can't say aloud most of the time. Pig is the nicer part of me. I'm probably closest to Goat in the sense that as an older person now, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, I'm a little more calm and I read a lot and I think a lot, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, they're all, they're all me, yeah. Well, finally, uh, just wanted to ask, you include a lot of things that uh, traditionally haven't been in newspaper strips. There's profanity, there's drinking. Uh, have you ever gotten pushback for that or have you uh, come so far along that uh, you can do this now? There would, I, if we had time, there's about 4,000 stories of pushback. <laughs> um, there's specifically one that I don't think I can say in the air, but it was in a strip that your paper, the Democrat Gazette, was the only paper in the country to pull. Um, so I'm tempted to show it in the show, <laughs> but the editor of the paper is going to be there. So I don't want to make her mad to me. It's just, it's just funny. It, it was about two years ago, but, um, but then I, you know what I had, I, um, I have in my notebooks, a letter written to my syndicate from the former head of the Democrat Gazette named Frank Fallone. Uh-huh. I know him. He's a professor here. Oh, no kidding. He saw yeah. me do a Sunday strip where somebody swears and it's it's swear squiggle four swear squiggles ing which can only telegraph one word 
Yeah. And it was like, if you ever do this again, <laughs> that's it. So I never did it again. Like I didn't know the rules. So now when I swear in the strip, I use the same number of swear squiggles as there are letters in the word, but I don't use any real letters. I don't telegraph it that much. But that was because of that comment by that editor. I've been scared. Uh, that was uh, that was pushing it. So I agreed with him there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's uh, funny. That's ironic. Well, that's yeah. Stefan Pastis, who will be speaking in Little Rock on Wednesday, the 16th, at the Ron Robinson Theater, which is part of the Central Arkansas Library System. You can find a link and learn more about the event on our website, KUAR.org. Stefan, great talking with you. You too. It's been really fun. Thank you. This is KUAR 89.1.